Hey everybody, in this video we will learn how to make a car race around a track using Python and the Neat library. All of the code from this project is going to be freely available on my GitHub and that also includes all the images. So if you want to go ahead and check that out, you're going to find a link to it in the description down below. If you're new around here, then please consider subscribing and let's jump right in. All right, so at the moment I have PyCharm open. The first thing we're going to do is create a new project. We're going to create a project which is called drive AI underscore tutorial. And we are going to leave the check mark with the new environment. And in addition to that, we are going to leave all of this unchecked and press create. That's going to create a new project for us. All right, now that the project has been created, we are going to import all of the necessary assets. So over here on my desktop, you can see a folder called assets. If I show you what's inside the folder, you'll see there's a car, which is going to be the car which races around the track. And there is a track, which uh, is the one um, on which uh, the car is going to race around. So let's drag and drop that into our working directory in PyCharm. Now we're going to proceed by creating a new file. We're going to press on new, Python file, we're going to call it main.py, and this is going to be where we'll write all of our code. Okay, there are two more things that we need to do to finish the setup. The first thing we need to do is to add a configuration, and the next thing is to import all the necessary modules. Let's start off by adding the configuration. The fastest way to add a configuration is just to write some very uh, simple Python code in here, simply hello world, world, and then instead of adding the configuration manually, um, like so, instead of filling out all of this, it is much faster to simply have some code in your editor and then press Control, Shift, and F10. And you'll see that the code is executed. In addition to that, over here, the configuration is automatically added. And the next thing that you need to do is Save the configuration by clicking on the drop down menu and then pressing on save main configuration. Then the small icon will light up and you'll have the configuration saved. Now the shortcut that I mentioned a moment ago may not work for you guys because you have a different shortcut mapped in your settings. So just to make sure that every one of you can follow along in this tutorial, let me quickly call up the configurations that I have for this project. Now over here in this window, you can see several things. The first thing is the script path, which is the path to our main.py file. Then you can also see the Python interpreter as well as the working directory. All these three things have been filled out automatically by using the shortcut, but you can equally add these things manually. All right, so now that we've done all of that, we can go on and install the necessary modules that we'll require for this project. So in this project, we're going to make use of two modules. The first one is Pygame, and the second one is Neat Python. To install these modules, we simply go on to the terminal, and in the terminal, we simply type pip install Pygame, and you'll see that it will install the module. Now we can do the same thing for the second module. We're going to type pip install neat minus Python equals equals 0.92. And the last part simply specifies the version of Neat that we're installing. To check that these modules have successfully installed, you can simply type in pip list and you'll see a list of the modules that you have installed. All right, now that the setup is finished, we can jump into the editor and start coding. In order to be able to follow along with the code, we're going to proceed in very small steps so that you understand each and every part of this project. The very first step is going to be creating a window with our track and on top of the track we want to have the car which is able to move forwards whenever we press the arrow key. Let's start off by importing all the modules that we will need in this project. We're going to need Pygame, OS, Math, Sys, and Neat. Then we're going to specify the size of our screen window. The width of the screen is going to be 1,244 pixels because that corresponds to the width of the image of the track. And since the height of the track image is 1,016 pixels, we're going to set the screen height to 1,016 pixels. Then we initialize the screen on which the game is played and subsequently we can load in the image of the track. 
Now we're going to create the class car which inherits from the sprite class. The sprite class is really useful when it comes down to handling visible game objects, such as the car in our case. The first function in this class is going to be an init function, and in this function we're going to initialize the parent class. We're going to load the original image of our car. Then we're going to set the image which is displayed on our screen equal to the original image. We're then going to specify the rectangle of the image. Next, we're going to include a state variable drive state, which is going to be true when the car drives, but by default and when the car is initialized, we want it to be false. To handle the speed at which the car drives, we're going to add a velocity vector. And finally, we're going to set the angle of the car equal to zero. This angle will become useful later on when we take care of the steering of the car. The next function is going to be the update function. And whenever this function is called, it is going to update the car. Now our car can do two things. It can drive and it can rotate. That means we're going to include a call to the function drive as well as a call to the function rotate whenever the update function is called. Now that we've called these two functions, we also need to define them. So let's start off by defining the drive function. The drive function is going to have an if statement, and the if statement states that if the drive state is equal to true, then we want to increment the rectangle coordinates of the car image by the velocity vector. And when we do that, it is going to look like the car is driving across our screen. Next, we're going to include the rotate function. And for the moment, the only thing this function is going to do is it's going to scale down the original image to a smaller image that fits onto our window. We're going to leave the rotation of the car away for the moment, just to not overcomplicate things right from the beginning. Then we're going to create a container that holds a single sprite image, and for that we use the group single function. And to this group single function, we're going to add a sprite object, which is going to be an instance of the class car. Next, we're going to move on and create the main loop of our game. The main loop of our game is going to be within a function called eval genomes, which is short for evaluate genomes. Now you may be wondering why I'm giving the main loop such a strange name. And the reason for that is quite simple. The main loop is going to help us evaluate the fitness of all the cars going around the track. And this in turn will determine what cars are used by the algorithm to learn the driving mechanic. But don't be confused by the name. When we move forward in this tutorial, you will understand why we call it this and what it has to do with building the AI. So within the eval genomes function, we're first going to create a variable called run and set it to true. Then we're going to add a while loop and the while loop is going to run for as long as the run variable is set to true. The very first thing that we're going to add to this while loop is the standard code block which allows us to exit the game whenever we press the red cross in the top right hand corner of our window. Then we're going to blit the track image onto our screen. And don't be confused by the word blit. All that means is display in Pygame language pretty much. Then we're going to handle the user input. Specifically, we're going to set the variable user input equal to the key that is pressed on our keyboard. And then using an if statement, we're going to set the drive state to false when no keys are pressed. Then we're going to move on and create an if statement. And this if statement is going to set the state of drive to true whenever the up key on the keyboard is pressed. And the very last thing that we need to do within the main loop is we need to take care of all the updates. First, we're going to draw the car on our screen window. Then we're going to update the car and then update the display. Finally, we need to make a call to the function which contains our main loop, which was called eval genomes. All right, so now we've done pretty much everything that we need to do for the first step. So let's go ahead and run this and see what the result looks like so far. So what you can see is that the track has been put on a game window and every time I press the up key on my keyboard, the car drives forward. All right, so that's going to be it for this very first step. In the next video, we're going to take care of the steering of the car. So the car will be able to steer left and right.